Hey, hey, hey. All right, part three, we made it. Okay, um, this one is gonna be a little longer because it's important. Not because um, the outline is longer necessarily, but it is. So make sure you got your pen and highlighter. Let's go ahead and jump on in. Endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, this is what is going to um, transport those proteins you made. Remember um, from the last video that ribosomes make proteins. Well, after they're made, the endoplasmic reticulum, ER, transports them, right? Okay, so it's made out of cisternae, composed of a network of small tubules called cisternae. They are always right outside the nucleus. So if you'll remember right here, this picture you'll see has the purple nucleus, and then I'll do it in yellow just for fun, the ER. So the ER is always right outside the nucleus. And there's two types. This is easy. The rough ER because it's rough because it has ribosomes attached. It, when they looked at it under a microscope, it looked bumpy, so they named it rough ER. But now we know those bumps are ribosomes. And then there's smooth ER, which is smooth. It's not rough. Okay, so first at your notes it says smooth ER, and it is going to synthesize fats, lipids, phospholipids, and steroids. All of those things are fats. So it's going to make fats or lipids, make lipids, break down carbohydrates, break down big carbohydrate is a big sugar. It's going to detox the blood. So liver cells would have lots of smooth ER because your liver is the organ that cleans out your blood. And then liver cells and muscle cells have lots of smooth ER. And your smooth ER, it also stores calcium. So go ahead and write that in. Stores, you can abbreviate calcium like that, CA+. plus. Okay, so pause the video. You want to run through all those things and make sure you know the four functions of the smooth ER because that's just memorization. So pause the video. All right, make sure you can say it makes lipids, breaks down carbs, detoxes blood, and stores calcium. So that's the four things the smooth ER does. The rough ER um, is, you know, the ribosomes are attached to it. So we said that. You might want to write that in. Oh, yeah, the ribosomes are bound to the outside of the organelle. And they're going to move the proteins around. Uh, inside the structure, the protein can fold up into specific 3D structure needed to function. So it's going to, it's, it's not written, so you want to write it down. Transport proteins. Okay, the Golgi, right here, um, you may have heard this called like the UPS man or whatever, but it packages the proteins. It's going to, uh, it says modify, right? Change proteins by attaching a sugar. So it's going to take the protein and it's going to put a sugar on it. And that sugar is kind of like a flag. It tells it where to go and what to do. Like a label. Kind of like UPS. You put your label on your envelope. Now it knows where to go. Well, it's going to put a sugar on the protein. So if you haven't noticed, it's all about the protein. We made the protein in the ribosome. We transferred the protein in the ER. And now the Golgi, we're going to put a sugar on it. And now it's a glycoprotein. Glyco meaning sugar. Um, so it's kind of like gift wrapping it. It's putting the bow on it. They are also composed of cisternae. So that word should ring a bell, right? So ER and Golgi are made up of the same thing. Lysosomes. Um, you know what Lysol is, right? It disinfects uh, if you have like the flu or whatever, your mom may spray Lysol. Well, this is what cleans the cell. So um, they act like a stomach for the cell. They are involved in digestion and recycling. So it's going to clean it out. They're full of lysozyme. You see that word? It's like Lysol but enzyme together. Lysozyme. And it is cleaning the cell. So 
cleans out the cell. Write that down. Cleans out the cell. And it's got those enzymes, those magic enzymes called lysozyme. Okay, vacuoles. Plants have a really big vacuole. And they're for storing, like a big old Ziploc bag in the middle. Storing water and food. Okay, or Tupperware. So vacuoles are storage structures. Think about it doesn't rain every day. So plants have to store water in between days that it rains. So they store food. I'm writing this down. Store food and water. So vacuoles store food and water. So it stores food and water. That's what your vacuole does. Okay, endocytosis. Well, there's different types of vacuoles. Back up for just a second. Different types of vacuoles. Um, and they may pump water out, or that would be a contractile vacuole, or a central vacuole. That's going to be the storage one. Uh, endocytosis is the process. If you look at the picture, you can see food going... Look at the word, inside the cell. C-Y-T-O means cell. So endo, you know what endo means, like inside, right? Endo, the cell. Uh, and there's two types of endocytosis. There's phagocytosis, which would mean food. And penocytosis, like a pina colada, you can remember that, um, means drink. So food, phagocytosis, or drink, penocytosis. Okay, so inside, if it's food, it's phago. If it's drink, it's penocytosis. Mitochondria, you probably already know. That's where the energy is made, right? So um, it makes the ATP, the organelle responsible for cellular respiration. And that's um, the organelle that makes... ATP, right? Cell respiration. This organelle, you want to underline, has its own DNA. So it's it's got DNA like the nucleus, but it's separate. It's got different DNA called mitochondrial DNA. It's got ribosomes and it's got its own enzyme. So it's almost like this is a little bitty, the mitochondria is like a little bitty cell in itself. It's made out of cristae, which is different than Cisterna. So you want to know those two words apart. The mitochondria is made up of cristae, and that's important. So you want to know that word. Pause the video if you need to. Go back and look. The ER and the Golgi are made out of cisterna, and that's different. So cristae is the mitochondria. Uh, and that's all folded up, and that's so that the mitochondria can make lots of ATP. All the different folds is going to increase the surface area. So underline the word surface area. The folding increases the surface area so that it has more room to do cell respiration. The space between the membranes is also important. So you can see, look at the inner membrane and the cristae. You can see the spaces. Okay, the last one is the chloroplast. Oops, not the last one, I'm sorry. Uh, but the last organelle, yeah, is the chloroplast. And you know chloroplast, you probably already know. That's in plants. It's what makes plants green, right? The chlorophyll in chloroplast. Okay, so this is going to be the site of underlying photosynthesis in plants and algae. Don't just think that plants are the only organelles that do, organisms that do photosynthesis. Algae also does photosynthesis. Okay, above photosynthesis, I want you to write the process of making sugar. So photosynthesis is the process of making sugar. Right? Okay, the, uh, they're they are a type of plastid, so that's just a pigment, a color, right? 
Um, plastid is a pigment containing molecule, so they contain uh, chlorophyll. They also, like the mitochondria, underline have their own DNA, ribosomes, and enzymes. So besides C, put um, mitochondria too. So you don't forget, the mitochondria also, and the chloroplasts, have their own DNA, their own ribosomes, and their own enzymes. Okay, inside the chloroplast is a thylakoid. And a thylakoid, to me, looks like a cookie. I like cookies. Everything's about food, right? Okay, so um, they're like a green cookie inside the chloroplast. And that's where um, the light reaction of photosynthesis takes place. And we're going to talk way more about that in your next test. Not even on the first test. Actually, later. Third test, actually. Okay. Um, but that's where the light reaction of photosynthesis is. It's like a battery. The cookies are like a battery. And that's where the ATP and NADPH, those are both energy. Right out beside it, that's energy. That's all you want to know right now. Okay, and then a whole stack of cookies, which I've drawn a whole stack of cookies, is called grana. And so look at the picture, or look at my picture. One cookie is called a thylakoid, but a stack of cookies is called grana. And then stroma is the other stuff. It's like where the cookies are not, so like the yellow part. That is where the Calvin cycle takes place. Not the light reaction, but the Calvin cycle so photosynthesis has two steps, the light reaction and the thylakoid. Calvin cycle and the stroma. And these would have evolved chloroplasts from blue-green bacteria. Okay, last topic is endosymbiosis or endosymbiont hypothesis. Draw this with me. Okay, one bacteria, we're going to draw pretty much the rest of the video. One bacteria engulfed another bacteria. So that's a small bacteria. And this, is, this one is a large bacteria. And the, the hypothesis, that's all this is, is a hypothesis. The hypothesis is that this small bacteria right here evolved into either or both let's change colors a mitochondria or and a chloroplast why because just like a small bacteria the mitochondria and the chloroplast both have their own DNA, and their own ribosomes, and their own enzymes. And so, um, if you think about it, that kind of makes sense. And that's what the theory of endosymbiosis is. And Lynn Margulis, she is the one who um, came up with this theory, or this hypothesis, excuse me. Um, okay, I hope that was helpful.